Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to design using PSD templates inside of GIMP. PSD of course stands for Photoshop document and these are the equivalent of the .xcf file found in GIMP. They're both the native files for their respective programs. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.18 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before I get into that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of free software tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com, and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'm on a website called Graphics Fuel that has tons of free PSD mockups. And in this case, we're gonna be using the Outdoor Billboard Mockup PSD file. So here you can see what the mockup looks like. So it's basically like a billboard advertisement in the middle of a subway or something. And if you scroll down here, you'll see a download button. Click that, that'll take you to a zip file. It'll download a zip file, I should say. So here I am in my downloads folder. Right click on here and go to extract all. That's gonna bring up this folder and you could ignore this file. This is a file I created. But what you wanna do is come over here to the outdoor advertising mockup file. This is your PSD file, right click on it. Go to open with and you're going to select GIMP. This is just converting the template file from Adobe's native color profile to GIMP's. So I'll hit convert. They're both RGB color profiles. So here's the template inside of GIMP and this is the final version. This is replacing the default graphic there with my own graphic. So that's what we'll be going over today, working with PSD files, swapping out the default template graphics with your own graphics. It's actually pretty easy, so GIMP works well with PSD files, especially if you're using the latest version of GIMP. Again, I'm using GIMP 2.10.18. The GIMP team has made a concerted effort to make PSD files work better and better with GIMP, and they've also included more features in GIMP so that features from a PSD file will transfer over. The main thing I wanna mention is that GIMP does not support smart objects, so a lot of PSD template files use smart objects to easily swap out designs, logos, things of that nature. GIMP does not have that, and I do think it's a drawback about GIMP, but it's not something we can't work around. So looking at our template file here in GIMP, our PSD template file, if I come over here, you'll see this is the smart object, and usually this replaces this item in here inside this layer group. But if I double click on this, nothing happens. It's just going to bring up my layer attributes. Let me open up this template file in Photoshop to show you guys what this usually looks like. So I'll go with open with Photoshop. I already have this finished design because I did this in both GIMP and Photoshop. But if I scroll up top here, this is the same set of files in group folders, etc. There are some effects that will not transfer over to GIMP, but here is my smart object. So if I double click on the little thumbnail here, that will bring my smart object up in a new composition. And this is very convenient. It's telling me the size of the design here, 2000 by 1200. And I can just replace this with a standard rectangle design. And then when I save this and exit out of it, that design will automatically populate here. So that's definitely a benefit of Photoshop. Let me minimize this. In GIMP, there are a few extra steps, which is fine. For the first step, I'll come over to the Smart Object layer and just click and drag that layer up to the top left corner here on that little Wilbur icon. This will open up my Smart Object as its own composition. And this isn't a perfect rectangle, it's already in perspective. So not quite as easy as working with Photoshop, but that's all right. If we come up top here, we can see this is 1942 by 1311. So because this is in perspective, the dimensions are a little off, but we can basically safely round to the nearest value that makes sense. In this case, we can go to 2000 by 1200. Of course, it helps that we knew that based on opening this up in Photoshop, but you guys can use that technique if you don't have Photoshop, just sort of round these values to the nearest values that make sense. So I'll come over to my composition I created and I made this 2000 by 1200. So I'm not gonna go over how to design this from scratch, but I will include a link where you guys can download this if you wanna follow along. So once you have your design finished here, all you have to do is click and drag the tab here 
over to the Smart Object Composition and Release. So now we have this rectangle here and we need to match it to the perspective of the Smart Object. So I'll come over here to my Transform Tools, click and hold the Tool Group, and I'll come down here to Perspective. You can also hit Shift P to grab this tool. And then we're going to click once on our layer. So this is our dropped buffer layer. And make sure in the tool options for your perspective tool that you have the image opacity turned down. That way you can see the layer below. And now what I'll do is hold control, zoom in with my mouse, my mouse wheel. And I'm just going to grab this handle and bring this down like so. And we'll do the same thing for all four corners of this image. I'll hold control and zoom in. And I can hit this little arrow here to eject that. And that will bring this up in its own little dialog box I can move around. Hold control, zoom in. And we'll put it right there. All right, so double check that that's where you want it. You can also increase the image opacity if you want a better look. And once you're ready, hit transform. So here is our design in perspective now. So what I'll do is make sure I'm on this layer. I'll hit control C to copy this. So we're copying just the layer there. Then I'll come over to our template here. So coming down here to the layers panel, I do want to go over some of this stuff a little bit. So the top layer, as I mentioned, is the smart object. We have the man walking layer. So this is just this little graphic of this guy walking past to make this look more realistic. Below that though, we have the billboard mockup. So this is the entire billboard design here. It's all on one layer. Below that is the background setting. Below that is just a white background. So coming back to the billboard mockup, clicking on the Slayer group, you'll see the mode is set to pass through. We're gonna keep that there. That just means that some of the layer modes from this layer group are interacting with the background setting and that's just allowing it to look more realistic. But I can click this little plus icon to expand the layer group and we'll scroll down. So inside Photoshop, this is the layer that usually gets replaced by the smart object layer based on that sequence I showed you guys earlier. So of course that doesn't work in GIMP, but what you can do is just simply click on this. That will select this layer. Then we're going to alt click on it. That will create a selection around the object inside this layer. And then I can go over to edit, paste into selection. So that's going to paste the design we copied earlier. And because we clicked on the advertising mockup layer, when we pasted our design from the other composition in here, it pasted this as a floating selection above the advertising layer. So now we need to place this somewhere. What I'll do is click this new layer icon. That's going to place our floating selection there, our design on its own new layer. Let's double click on this and name this main design. Hit the enter key. So now we have our main design here and I'm going to keep the selection area intact. The reason for this is that we also need to add an inner shadow. If you come back here to Photoshop and you hold the Alt key and zoom in, you'll see the original design here had an inner shadow. The original template had an inner shadow. So if I expand the billboard mockup layer group and we'll scroll down, you'll see this automatically applied an inner shadow effect. This effect did not transfer over with the PSD file when we opened it up into GIMP. So we have to create our own inner shadow. So that's easy enough, so I'll minimize this. So with our selection area here still intact, I'm first going to start off by creating a new layer. And I've already got this named Inner Shadow. Fill this with transparency and click OK. Next, we're going to come over to our Paths tab and we're going to create a path from our selection. So let's click this option here labeled Selection to Path. Now our selection is a path around the object. So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. Now that we have our path, which you can see by unhiding the path here, I'm just gonna keep that hidden. I'll come over here to the Stroke to Path option or Paint Along the Path option. So now we can choose our stroke style. I'm gonna go with a solid color stroke. The line width, I'll go with 20. And for the line style, just make sure this is not a dashed line. So just go with the line option there. And also real quick, just make sure your foreground color is set to black and hit stroke. So that will create a stroke around our advertisement there. Let's come back to the layers panel. So on the inner shadow layer here, let's go over to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. 
hold control, zoom in with our mouse wheel. So we're just going to increase the blur until we get a nice inner shadow here. So somewhere around 10 is pretty good. I'm gonna keep it at that and I'll click OK. Hold control, zoom out with the mouse wheel. Next, I just need to erase the excess blur here with the stroke. So to do that, I'll come over here to our main design layer, Alt click on that. Once again, that will create a selection area here around the layer. Then I'll hit Control I to invert it. And we're still on our inner shadow layer. That's still our active layer. So I'll just hit the delete key. That will delete all the excess blur outside of that selection area. And I'll hit Control Shift A. And there's our final design. Once you've finished your design, there are a couple of things you can do here. So if you don't plan on using this template inside of Photoshop at any point, you could just save this as a .xcf file. And of course you can do that by going to File, Save, and that will take you to the menu to save this as a .xcf. If you do plan on sending this file to somebody using Photoshop, keep in mind that the features that did not transfer over to GIMP will not export to the PSD file. So it's pretty much going to export as is here from GIMP to a PSD file. In other words, the smart object will not transfer over and the inner shadow effect will not transfer over either. I'll show you what I mean. So let's come over here and go to File, Export As and we can export this as a PSD file. And you can see I already named this Outdoor Advertising Mockup GIMPed. So let's just do that again, but I'll put a two at the end. And I'll hit Export. Now, if we come over here, open up Photoshop, and let's come over to the folder that contains our file. Right click on it, go to Open With, and choose Photoshop. Hold the Alt key and zoom in. You can see first off, this looks pretty good in here. And second, if I come over here, you can see that everything is intact that we did in GIMP. All the layer modes are intact. So this is still set to pass through. And if I scroll down here, I didn't go over these, but these had uh, layer modes on them. This one did anyway, linear burn. So that transferred over, the layer groups transferred over. Here is that file that was a smart object before. It's no longer a smart object right now, but everything else did transfer over. The final option is you can send over the original PSD file with the smart objects and the effects and just send over your JPEG design file to the person that's handling the PSD document and they can go in and replace the smart object themselves and then from there they can do whatever they want with the design. They can save it as a PSD with all the effects intact or they can export it to a JPEG, whatever file type they need it as. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out all the links to my latest resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.